Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also gonna let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free, and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below, and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. I've got to start out. I mean, a lot of people probably are hearing all of your background, all of your expertise, and then your incredible experiences. Tell us how this all began for you. Well, I had to I had to laugh, Darius, when you were introducing me because I got, wow, that's a really interesting sounding person. <laughs> I would like to yeah. know her. And I, you know, I have to always tell people when they say, how have you had time in this little lifetime to do all of that? I always tell people it's because uh, necessity is the motherhood of invention, right? And, and any time someone came into my office and did what I call stump the chump, I was back in school mm. trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, you know, that's why it's, I, I've, I know that I'm on the planet to be a channel and to really serve. And I always ask that question every morning, how can I be of service? And so then it just takes me into all these different realms. And I just follow. I follow whatever I'm told to do. And, and here I am today. So that's how I got started. But you know, in terms of really understanding Ayurvedic medicine and functional medicine and, and energetic healing, it really happened because of my own story. When I was 30, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, in the Western model, that's an incurable disease. And when I went in to see my doctor, you know, for the very first time, I'd, I'd woken up with no energy. And, and I was called an energizer bunny before that morning by my friends. And it was as if someone had taken the batteries out of the Energizer Bunny. I'd gained 10 pounds overnight and just puffiness, like puff all over my body. My joints were red and inflamed and swollen. And so I, I got in and I was diagnosed with RA. And when I said, you know, what can I do to, to reverse this? She said, oh, you're not going to reverse it. And in fact... Mm. You know, you put in your family history here on the intake form that your grandfather had autoimmune disease. This is a genetic problem. And she kind of sort of closed the book, you know, put it on the shelf. This is it. This is your destiny. Gave me two prescriptions. One was for methotrexate, which is a cancer-fighting drug, and another was for a very strong non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And that's actually what's happening today. I'm 53, so 23 years ago, wow. what was happening then is exactly what people are being told today. And this is what she said as I left. When you get worse, not if you get worse, but when yeah. you get worse, mm. come back and we're going to increase the family or the classification mm. of drugs that we're giving you to immune modulator drugs. And so on my way home, I thought there must be a different way. And I was a very, you know, in high intensity medicine, I, I, I always laughingly say from stage I wouldn't have known an herb if it had done a little jig in front of me I just didn't even know anything about natural medicine and I just thought okay there's got to be something else and I, I went into the scientific research when I got home and I found Ayurvedic medicine which is the sister science of yoga 10,000 year old framework that these scholars wrote about all these years ago in India and said we're not all the same and, you yeah. know, Harris, this was, like, revolutionary mm. to me. I mean, it's such a simple concept, but it was really a, a paradigm shift in a huge way for me because what I realized is, oh, so this is why in the last 20, you know, well, I'd been in medicine for about 11 years at that point, in the last 11 years, why people react so differently to different medications because we expect these standardized outcomes and we call it evidence-based medicine, but we're not standardized people. We are just simply not the same. And that really helped rearrange things in my own head, and I thought, oh, this is going to teach me how to feed and water and take care of this body, mine, mm -hmm. and my unique way that I'm put together. 
And within six months, my RA was gone, and it hasn't been back wow. since. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, we're going to be opening up some of the tools, I believe, that you utilized and some of that energetic space. But I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about being struck by lightning and coming <laughs> back from near death several times. You can give I me know. some guidance on on what happened and, and maybe what happened when you transitioned uh, for that brief moment. Yeah. So... Uh... I think I I think I should probably start at a, a different spot, and that is when sure. I learned. I'll just take up the tale again. And, and when I learned about Ayurvedic medicine, I also learned about yoga, and I started practicing it and became a yoga teacher and learned how to meditate. And one day, as I was meditating, in my third eye space came dancing along this word autoimmune, you know, in my in my consciousness. Mm. And I started really examining it and looking at it, and I thought, gosh, autoimmune means I'm attacking myself. It means really, really, I'm committing suicide in a societally acceptable manner. And when I when I really understood that, I asked the question that's the most important, which is why? Why do I want to die? Because really consciously, I didn't. In that, you know, I was raising four beautiful children. I had a life I loved. I was running marathons. I was healthy according to my standards, and I didn't want to die. So I started tracing, you know, this golden breadcrumb of trail of time backwards to find out when was the first time I wanted to die. And I landed on this 10-year-old little girl version of myself who was being sexually abused by the vice principal of my elementary school. And at that time, I was in a school that was, I was one of two white children, and it was an all-African-American school, and the um, vice principal was telling me that this was happening because I was a bad kid and because I was white trash. And when you're young like that, so 10 years old, you don't have a fully developed brain yet. Your prefrontal cortex or the part of you that can do adult reasoning isn't isn't even formed. And so what you do is you go into a very self-centered space because you're, as you're growing up as a child, you're trying to figure out how to be human on this planet full of other humans, and it is all about you and you are self-centered. So everything that you make up in your meanings and your belief systems has you at the core. So what I made up was, because I was in school, Mm. was that I have to be perfect to even survive. And that was pretty accurate at that time for this little kid, right? But what happens is we create that meaning and that belief, and then we take that forward into adulthood. And so I tried to tell my mom what was going on. My dad was out to sea. I was a Navy brat, and Mm. I didn't have words at my disposal like sexual abuse or molestation. I I just didn't even know those words. I didn't even know the word sex. And so I kind of danced around it, I'm sure, when I tried to tell her. And plus felt like he had told me it was my fault, so it must be. And somehow I stood out in this group of people as something's wrong with me, you know. Yeah. And so what happened is then as a kid, I became very hypervigilant. And what I found as an adult in in medicine is that kids that have gone through trauma, A, yeah are usually far more intuitive than people that haven't because your radar is on and you're scanning your environment and picking up patterns, right? B, they're much more willing to leave their bodies behind and go to Mm. visit the angels that are visiting them and see the light that they see, you know, because this world doesn't feel safe. And so I was always looking for a safe place. I would sit out underneath the palm trees. This was in Florida. And, you know, gaze out at Mother Nature. And I I remember reading Lord of the Rings at that time, and, and Galadriel was my hero. And I would sort of, like, bring Galadriel to life in my consciousness as this image of purity because I, I didn't feel that in my regular life. So whenever I had something like um, the first near-death experience I had was when I was 16, and I just remember this. Someone else was driving, and we were teenagers, and the semi-truck was coming towards us, and the driver was in the wrong lane. We were going to have a head-on collision. And I was not frightened, and I could feel angels coming to get me, and I was excited. And I think that that is present for a lot of people that have had trauma in their background. They're, They're used to 
feeling uncomfortable in the human form. Hello and welcome. This is Derry Sparazande, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the UF Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now, daily, where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.